on the back of your paper is the uh, ex these some of you can you hear me some of you may have seen this um this copy in your pews because the front the front pews i think the first three pews behind the cross i'll have this a, a half a sheet like oh, excuse me in the uh, in the pews for you to, uh, as a guideline and I just want I just want to point these things out to you. Then I'm going to show you how to navigate the books, and also looking at the uh, copy of the prayer the prayer paper that we get every week, so you kind of know what the letters mean and what, what where to go and what to do and what's that number mean. Do I go to this book or that book or whatever? <laughs> whatever. We just kind of do it naturally. But but I, when I was at Beach Grove, I had to I don't know where they found that book, or not. they got that wrong. Then I had the wrong book. No, I can't. Anyway. So first of all, the liturgy hours, as you well know, you pray with the community, and we pray together. I'm not going to read that first paragraph, but you know, we're so here are some of the things that we need to be aware of. We chant or recite in a soft voice, listening to one another, so that we are united as one voice, praising God. And I always know when you're when you have one person or two people that are more forceful, their voice kind of stands out, and you say, "Oh, come on, just blend in with the rest of us," you know. And I've noticed it's primarily because this last week with being at Beach Grove, the, the women who are in ministry, who are preachers and who are, they kind of come up strong, you know, so they kind of overshadow the rest of the community, <laughs> especially if you have eight of them all together. And going, oh, 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 oh. Anyway, also, uh, we praise, we pause briefly at the end of each line, each line, and begin the new line with a new breath. Sometimes they just kind of do a one-on sentence, no, pause, and then go, continue. We all sing the hymn. All of us together. We alternate sides to side when reciting our chanting psalms or canticles. And I'll tell you more about that in just a minute when I show you that chart because side, who's, who's side one? How do you know who's side one, who's side two? You know, if you don't know. Now, Beach Grove always has a one side, always the same, the first side, the first choir. But that's not, um, we, we don't do that. We alternate. So anyway, we pause for a reflection for 30 seconds between each song. So people oftentimes will say, what a long time, what, what are they waiting for? Are they, did they forget the beginning or something? No, we pause for 30 seconds and one minute after the reading. So I think it was a little bit longer for a reflection, personal reflection. We pray the Our Father slowly, and this is always evident when we have a group of people that are not familiar with our prayer. Some are finished with the Our Father before we say, give us this day. <laughs> And then we follow, of course, the monastic community regarding the gestures and bows. And some of those are kind of confusing at times because sometimes you see a sister bowing like this, another sister going like this. Okay, so it's kind of a bit different. So anyway. Then you'll see on the other side of that, the Liturgy of the Hour. For the morning prayer, we have two different glory of these. And I don't know if you can't figure that out or not, but maybe you have, maybe you haven't. Uh, of course, we have the call to prayer for the morning. It's, oh, Lord, open my lips. And of course, we open our lips by the, with the cross on the lips oftentimes. My mouth shall declare your praise. And then we say that glory be. And of course, we say the hallelujah now because of the Easter season. And then we say the doxology at the end of the Psalms and Canticle too, at the very end. And this is the one that's different. Glory to God, our creator, to Jesus Christ, our redeemer, and to the Holy Spirit. So it's, the two are different. Sometimes you say, well, what did they do? I must have missed a word or something. Well, they're different. So just so you're aware of that. However, midday prayer and evening prayer, you know, it's the same thing. The glory to Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. So does that make sense? The two different glories, because I think people sometimes get that and they accept and they say, well, I think they said a different prayer than what I was used to saying. But anyway, that's the gist of that. And then I want to go to the, as you can tell, I'm, I'm a sheep person. Here I am. Okay. Uh, what I, I don't know if you want to put that up, Kathy, or not. It's just basically the paper that we use in, in church. It's a, like literally our paper. I don't, I, yeah. I mean, basically, it's going through one. As you well know, you all receive a paper like this. This is what the one looks like in church if you have one of those small papers that I just talked about. But this is a paper you receive when you come into church. You know, it's, it's the one that has the, the, has the uh, liturgy of the hours on one side, and then it has the mass on the other side. You know, now, usually you get an extra sheet with the mass on, correct? I think that's in the back of the pew. Yeah, Sorry. right. The, the one that you kind of like insert, for, and that's just for the Eucharist, I believe, correct? That's not for the Liturgy of the Hours. So, but the Liturgy of the Hours, like this morning, I want to show you, this is the book we used this week. This is the Easter book. We have them for the different seasons. They have different colors. 
you know, like for the, I know for the advent, we have a, a dark uh, kind of a royal blue cover for Lent, we have a purple one. So this is the one for Easter. So right now, this is the one they would be giving you or handing you. And you'll notice too, the different tabs on the side. It has the hymn. So if there's a hymn that's men mentioned in your on your paper here, it'll be a, just a small number. If it has BP, breaking, breaking bread. That's whenever you see a BP, it's this book here. And usually they have those hands, the, the, they're, they're usually out. If it's G, <laughs> and I don't think they use this one very often when there's a large group, but G is a gather book. So if there's a G, it's this book, okay? This is, this is show and tell. Can you go get some of those papers? I don't think, I don't think we do, not right now. We'll see. Anyway, and then so like this, this morning we had B, B, 470. So that would be in that book there that had Breaking Bread, page 470. Okay. Then it has, uh, and I want to tell you this, on the note, the number here on the side, page 236, that's always the page for the Psalms. So you would come to this book, Psalmody, and you would go to 236. And that would be the beginning of your prayer, your Psalms. Does that make sense? So that is the number at the very top up here. The initials below is the usually the musicians or the organist or whoever it is. This morning it was SDM, which is Sister Donna Marie. You may not know her. I don't know if you know her or not, but anyway. And then we have the and then it goes down to the Psalms. Psalms 119 and the mode is 6A, which is the, the singing, the, the chant. Psalm 118, mode two, different chant. I don't, I don't think the modes are in this book. I think that's on a different sheet of paper. So I yeah, I don't think you need to pay attention to that because I think you'll just follow the community with that. Correct. And then Canticle was litany. So that's what I was leading this morning. You probably heard me say, bless the God, all the birds, or whatever it was. That was on the in toner. And then Psalm 150 is mode five. Then the response psalm is usually right after the psalms underneath the, the, the uh, psalms. So the response is usually, it's usually this here, musical part, right like this, as the response. And that's what's been mentioned on your paper. The Benedictine act, uh, Benedictine antiphon, that would be the gospel antiphon, which would be in the back, and that's what this here gospel antiphons would be. That's what you call the antiphons. And then the gospel canticles are like the Benedictus or the uh, Magnificat. Does that make sense? Okay. And then and those are go those go by letters D and E or whatever. On Sunday morning, the ribbons on the book, most of them mark not always, not always, but a lot of times they're okay. marked. So that you know, sometimes the ribbons are marked, so it should be easier for you to find. But if you look at the numbers, you should be able to find them pretty easily anyway. If they're the ones on, if they're the ones on the table, on the table. Put them on. right? Okay, that's good to know. And the one with the Benedictus is always a, a always a. Uh, Different one, like this morning we had, um, what was the one we had this morning? I am the good shepherd. I am the shepherd, the shepherd of, uh, I know my sheep, is up here at the top. And remember, we say this at the beginning of the canticle, the Benedictus, and also afterwards. Most people don't go back to it afterwards. So it's both, both and. At the beginning of the canticle, then we say the canticle, then we go back to the, the end. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. Got that one. Okay. So, is there any? And I think with regard to the Eucharist itself, it's basically your paper that you usually have. And if you're not here, there'll be a. It'll be on the back. I mean, if you come like during the week, I know Lisa comes during the week oftentimes, so she would be having just a paper where it talks about the hymns right here, and the antiphons and so on the back. So, any questions about that? I think kind of. 
Does that help you a little bit to go back and forth to those, the markings and stuff? Okay. So I think that's about all that I have to say about that. Is there any questions? And I have a closing prayer and then I'm going to, or maybe I should, do I have another closing prayer? Do I have a prayer, do I have a prayer at the end? No, I don't. You did. Good I, okay, I want to have this little closing prayer. The reason I want to share this is this is a prayer that I wrote myself for those who are in spiritual direction, who are seeking spiritual direction. So like if you're seeking spiritual direction, I wrote this prayer so that you would pray this here, hopefully before you come for spiritual direction or during the time that you're praying about fasting. Let's just pause for a moment again and quiet and being grateful what has happened this afternoon so far and knowing that God is truly with us and God's love is unending. As we continue to pray for guidance, and so we pray, all loving God, we praise and thank you for the many ways you grace us on our spiritual journeys, especially as oblates. Continue to be with us for we desire to live each day fully in your abiding presence. Grace us with silence to listen to your whispers. Grace us with acceptance for who we are now. Grace us with discernment as we make right choices. Grace us with compassion as we serve others. And grace us with your unconditional love and your lasting peace. We ask that through these gifts, we will be led by your Holy Spirit to listen, speak, and act always in the name of the Divine Trinity, now and forever. Amen. Thank you so much.